हेलो स्टूडेंट दिस इज द थर्ड पार्ट ऑफ आवर लेक्चर ऑन मैप ऑफ इंडिया इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू वी आर गोइंग टू सी पासिस देर आर टू पासिस विच आर टू बी लोकेटेड इन द मैप ऑफ इंडिया द फर्स्ट वन इज काराकोरम पास एंड द सेकेंड वन इज नाथुला पास द काराकोरम पास द काराकोरम पास इज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल सी वॉट इज अ पास पास इज अ पाथवे और वे लोकेटेड इन द माउंटेनियस रीजन सो इट इज़ अ इट इज़ अ वे इन अ माउंटेनियस रीजन सो फर्स्ट इज काराकोरम पास काराकोरम पास इज प्रजेंट इन द लद्दाख रीजन ऑफ द जम्मू एंड कश्मीर स्टेट एंड इट कनेक्ट्स द जिनजियांग प्रोविंस ऑफ चाइना एंड जम्मू एंड कश्मीर प्रोविंस ऑफ इंडिया through the himalayan mountains the second important pass is nathula pass nathula pass is located in the sikkim state of india and it connects the sikkim state of india to the tibet autonomous province of the china so in this way these are the two important passes which are present in india the next things Uh, which are to be located in the map of india are uh, latitudinal and longitudinal lines and the two latitudinal longitudinal lines two important latitude lat long lines in the map of india are tropic of cancer and standard meridian so we all know that tropic of cancer passes through india uh, tropic of cancer is 23 and half degree latitude uh, line 23 and half degree north latitudinal line uh, so it passes it bisects the india into two halves it passes through gujarat uh, you can see the location of the tropic of cancer it passes through gujarat and bisects india uh, and you have to you cannot draw a straight line as a tropic of cancer the line must be bit curved because uh, all the latitudinal lines present on the surface of the earth are curvy linear they are not straight lines therefore you have to draw a bit curvy linear line uh, as tropic of cancer it passes through gujarat and on the other side it passes through Mizor mizoram state so it can be easily drawn the next um, next line is a longitudinal line and that is standard meridian of india and which which is 82 degrees 30 minutes or 82 and half degrees east longitudinal line and this line decides the time zone of india so the timing of this uh, region or this line is considered as the time of india and it passes through allahabad allahabad uh, allahabad city and it is very easy to locate because uh, we have references of the rivers on the map and the location of allahabad is the and the location of allahabad is uh, at the junction of river yamuna and ganga means the place where the yamuna and ganga river meet is allahabad therefore you have to draw a straight line through ilahabad where, where that is the conjunction of ganga and yamuna rivers so in this way you have to draw, you have to draw uh, latitudinal and longitudinal lines the next is direction of monsoon winds and you have two types of winds in our syllabus the southwest monsoon winds southwest monsoon winds have wind have two branches arabian sea branch and bay of bengal branch so we must know both these uh, how these two branches uh, flow and next is northeast monsoon wind or retreating monsoon wind so we will locate these two uh, do these two winds uh, on the map so uh, you can see in this map uh, southwest monsoon winds are shown the southwest monsoon wind start in the month of june when a a low pressure area 
is developed in the northern india you can see that low pressure area in the northern india and at the same time in the southern hemisphere there is a high pressure area due to cold weather means in the month of june uh, when india is face facing sev severe heat at the same time the southern hemisphere is uh, is very cold and therefore a low pressure area is developed in the indian uh, in the north indian region and a uh, high pressure region is present in the uh, in the southern hemisphere therefore winds flow from the high pressure region to the low pressure uh, low pressure region and uh, in this way in this direction they have to be shown uh, the southwest monsoon wind winds get split into two directions one is uh, arabian sea branch arabian sea branch is responsible for the rain in the rain in nearly entire india and it directly enters through the western part of india into india uh, and then uh, bay of bengal branch bay of bengal branch you can see this bay of bengal branch first travel over the bay of bengal and then it enters into the eastern india and uh, and then it travels towards the western part of the india so in this way bay of bengal branch of uh, bay of bengal branch of southwest monsoon wind is present and there is another offshoot of bay of bengal branch which travels into the myanmar uh, in the map you have to show the southwest monsoon wind in this manner now we will see the northeast monsoon wind or retreating monsoon wind these condition arise when there is cold weather in the india means in the month of october september and october when the uh, northern part of india becomes cooler and the weather in uh, therefore uh, a high pressure belt is created in the northern part of india and at the same time a low pressure belt is present in the southern hemisphere therefore winds start to flow from india to the southern uh, in the uh, to the southern hemisphere from northeast of india to the southwest therefore these winds are called as northeast monsoon wind most of most of these winds do not produce rainfall in india in most of the parts they do not produce rainfall but in tamil nadu region they produce rainfall in the months of december therefore uh, in the map it it can be shown in this manner now we will turn to the next part and that part is distribution of minerals and the topics which are included in our syllabus are or the locations which are included in our syllabus are uh, oil which is found in mumbai high and that is offshore oil field another oil field is digboi which is present in the assam next is iron uh, and iron ore is found in the singapore region and uh, another important mineral is coal which is uh, there in our syllabus and which is found in jharia so we'll see the map in the map you can see <coughs> sorry in the map you can see that mumbai high mumbai high you can lo easily locate mumbai and it is mumbai high is not present in the mumbai it is present away from mumbai in the arabian sea it is a offshore oil field means oil is found in the in the sea and it is extracted from there the next location is in the assam uh, and digboi digboi is digboi is present in the far eastern far eastern part of india and it is a it is also a, a oil field an oil field next is jharia jharia is present in the central part of the jharkhand state and there is a coal mine in the jharia region and singhbhum is present in the southern part of the jharkhand state and iron ore is found in the jharia uh, sorry in the singhbhum so these are the four topics which are included in the distribution of minerals now we will see soil distribution in the india and you have to mark only four types of soils uh, they are alluvial soils laterite soil black soil and red soil now we will see the map <coughs> sorry in the map you can see 
that uh, first we will see alluvial soil alluvial so soil is mainly found in the gantic plains or uh, indian plains the region which is marked as indian plains is uh, contains uh, alluvial soil uh the biggest region of the alluvial soil is uh, indian plains only apart from that you will find alluvial soil in this region in this part of the southern india and this region is this region is uh, here this alluvial alluvium or alluvial soil is carried by the godavari krishna kaveri uh, tungabhadra rivers and therefore this uh, in this region Uh, you find alluvial soil the next next type of soil is red and yellow soil or red soil red soil is found in the it is mainly found in the southern and central india you can see that most of the parts of the southern india are uh, are covered with the red soil uh, and also in the central region uh, you can see you can mark this region this region contains red soil next is black soil the main location the most important location of the black soil is deccan plateau it is mainly found in maharashtra madhya pradesh telangana and uh, karnataka states and this is the most uh, important region of the black soil uh, found in india and uh, next is laterite soil laterite soil is uh, is found in the konkan and malabar coast region here you can see that it is found in the konkan and malabar coast and also found in some regions in the arauli mountain ranges this is the region where uh, laterite soil is found in india so these are some locations where different types of soils are found in india now we will see the next uh, map or the next uh, question which is towns in india and the towns which are to be located in india are delhi mumbai kolkata chennai hyderabad bengaluru kochi shrinagar visakhapatnam and allahabad now we will see one by one these state we'll start from the north india the first uh, the first city is shrinagar it is present on the western side of the jammu and kashmir state remember that it is present on the western side only and on the eastern side you have ladakh and on the western side there is kashmir region and in the kashmir region srinagar city is present uh, as we come down we will see delhi delhi is easier to mark it is located at the heart of india and now uh, as we come down we will see allahabad uh, allahabad can be can also be easily located as uh, <laughs> the point where Ganga and Yamuna rivers meet. Next is Kolkata. Kolkata is present uh, uh, in the eastern side. Here the uh, the Kolkata is located. Next is Mumbai. We all know the location of Mumbai on the western side. Then Visakhapatnam. See the location of Visakhapatnam in the state of Andhra Pradesh. Uh, it is a coastal city. Uh, a very important coastal port on the Bay of Bengal. then we will see hyderabad hyderabad is located uh, in the cent <coughs> in the indian peninsular region uh, and in the state of telangana now we'll as we move down we'll see bangalore bangalore is present in the southern part of the karnataka state then we'll move to chennai it is also another coastal city and very important port on the bay of bengal and next is kochi kochi or cochin it is present uh, it is also a coastal city and important port but this port is present on the arabian sea so these are the important cities the next topic is distribution of population and in the distribution of population we have to locate the uh, we have to locate the states with respect to the uh, their population density so this map is showing the population densities of the various states first we'll see uh, you can <coughs> you can divide the state uh, divide the different regions uh, by by drawing uh, inclined lines so i'm drawing this uh, i'm first drawing this inclined line and this inclined line is of uh, this includes 
द स्टेट ऑफ जम्मू कश्मीर हिमाचल प्रदेश एंड उत्तराखंड दीज दिस इंक्लाइंड लाइन हैव लोअर पॉपुलेशन डेंसिटी एंड द रीजन बिहाइंड द लोअर पॉपुलेशन डेंसिटी इज द माउंटेनियस टेरेन ऑफ दिस रीजन नाउ आई एम ड्रॉइंग अनदर अनदर इंक्लाइंड लाइन दिस इंक्लाइंड लाइन इंक्लूड्स द स्टेट्स ऑफ पंजाब हरियाणा उत्तर प्रदेश बिहार एंड वेस्ट बंगाल and this line have a very high population density uh, the, the density of the population is above 500 above 500 and uh, and the reason behind the high population density is uh, is the alluvial soil and the plain terrain of this region this region is the uh, indogangetic plain and therefore uh, it Uh, the transport facilities are very well developed and therefore the population density is very high now we'll draw another line and this line includes the states of uh, rajasthan madhya pradesh uh, chatisgarh and odisha and this region have a low population density between 100 and 1 to 300 and the reason is uh, in the rajasthan the population density is less because of the a uh, desert region and scarcity of water uh, madhya pradesh and chatisgarh and odisha have large concentrations of uh, forest and therefore the population density is less now i will draw another now i will draw another horizontal line and this horizontal line contains gujarat maharashtra goa karnataka telangana uh, andhra pradesh and Uh, Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu, and this region have a moderate population density between 300 and 300 to 500 people per square kilometer. And now we'll turn to the last state. Last state is uh, Kerala. Kerala contain uh, Kerala has a high population density, uh, which is above 500 500 uh, people per square kilometer. So we have covered all the topics. Uh, which are included in our syllabus uh, thank you very much